All right, before I solve this question, let me give you some words. Because uh, so many people think that math is just about solving problems, and they don't pay attention to words. And later they uh, get confused because they don't know the proper names for things. So uh, first of all, uh, this right here, let me use a different chalk. This, this one right here is called the initial value. And this entire problem is called the initial value problem. And initial value problems have an equation that has a derivative. So you can really think of this as a differential equation, because there's a derivative and an equal sign. And then there's a condition which we call the initial value. Now, a solution to the initial value problem is called a particular solution, but uh, let me explain why that is so a little later. But let's try to just gradually build up the antiderivative. So let's write down the solution. This here is saying that there is a function whose derivative creates e to the x, cosine x, and x squared. So let's think about what differentiates to e to the x, what differentiates to cosine x, and what differentiates to x squared. First, what differentiates to e to the x? Now this one, uh, some people try to memorize this saying that, oh, antiderivative of cosine is sine, and antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. I try to avoid that because that just makes me confused uh, with the derivatives. So I just always think in terms of derivatives. Uh, I just remember that sine differentiates to cosine and cosine differentiates to negative sine. Is that good? Right. So if you knew that, then which one goes here? Sine. Sine <coughs> differentiates to cosine. Now this one is a bit more tricky. and uh, you can start by saying x cubed prime equals to 3x squared, and then try to divide by both sides, divide both sides by 3, and that says 1 third of x cubed should give you x squared. 1 third x cubed prime gives you x squared. But another way to get this is by using the, the power rule. And uh, let me explain the power rule after we solve this problem, but, but the power rule formula goes like this. The antiderivative of x to the nth power is you add 1 to the exponent and you put the reciprocal in front, and plus c. Where plus c is the integration constant. It all, always appears when you find the antiderivative, right? Okay, uh, so applying this formula for x squared where n is 2 will give you 2 plus 1, that's 3 and 1 over 3, that's why you get 1 third x cubed. That's another way to get it. And let me uh, discuss this a little bit more after this problem is solved. Anyway, so after seeing these, you can say that the function f of x must be made of these functions with these coefficients, 3, negative 4, and 1. So you, you must have 3 times u of the x minus 4 sine of x and then plus one-third x cubed. And then there should be a c. This one is integration constant. And you might ask, why do we ha have that? Well, that's because what's the derivative of a constant? It's zero, right? So if you differentiate this, no matter what this c is, it will all give you this single thing. It means that there is not a single solution to this one, but there are infinitely many solutions to this antiderivative problem. And you always have to have this plus c to get them all. Now, uh, there's a policy in my class when I grade exams. Okay? 
any time that you require C, you forget, that's one point off. And whenever I teach, there's always this one kid who would forget the plus C for all of these questions, and I, I would have, have something like seven or eight, and they, there goes eight points. Even, even if uh, he, he got everything right, uh, just missing those plus C's accumulates and you get like seven or eight points below. That's a, like that's like a full letter grade below uh, what you're supposed to get. So it's pretty devastating if you make that mistake. So don't forget the plus C, right? Okay, so with this, we're not done yet because uh, we have this initial value. It's an initial value problem. So that's why I'm saying that this f of x is a particular solution. There are many different functions that will satisfy the first condition. However, there's only one particular one that will satisfy f of zero equals to two. And you do it by saying, uh, you plug in f, f of, you plug in zero into x, so f of zero is three times e to the zero minus four sine of zero plus one third zero cubed plus c equal to, what should this equal to? Two, right? It says two. This has to equal to 2. And then you have to evaluate all this. Okay, What's e to the 0th power? 1. <coughs> What's sine of 0? Zero? 0. zero. Sine of 0 is 0. So 4 times 0. And 0 cubed is 0. 0 times 1 third is 0. So that's also 0. Plus c equals to 2. So that 2 is equal to negative, no, just 3 plus c. And therefore, if you subtract 3, you get c equals to negative 1. Okay. A common mistake. You would solve until here and get pretty impressed at yourself, right? Wow, I, I'm in calculus class. I'm, I'm solving an actual problem, right? And you stop right here. What's wrong with that? Huh? You... No, no. What's wrong with just stopping here? You need to put it at the final? Yeah, because the question is asking for the function itself, right? It's not asking for C. You, if you just finish here, you're, you're answering with the wrong thing. Yeah. It's like uh, somebody saying, uh, give me uh, what coffee and cookies, and you just give them cookie, and that's it. Forget the coffee or something. Right? You have to provide the exact thing that you're requested, okay? Yeah. Or the customer gets mad. In, in this case, uh, right? so uh, you want to take this negative one, put it back in here, and that's your function f of x, which is what we call the particular solution. So the particular solution is 3e e to the x minus 4 sine x plus 1 third x cubed plus negative one. Or you can just write this as just minus 1. That would be the final solution. Okay. Now let me make a slight remark about the power rule. Remark on the power rule. As I said, power rule is if you want to find the antiderivative of x to the n, you add 1 to the exponent and you put the reciprocal in front. Plus c. Now the formula I wrote is exactly the same as what you would see in any calculus textbook. However, there is a subtle thing that I'm, I'm doing differently than what other people do uh, when they explain this or any textbook does it, okay? And that subtle part is, I said, when I, call, when I looked at this, I said it's a reciprocal, okay? It's subtly different. Okay? And I'm saying this because I've been teaching calculus for more than 10 years, so uh, I know these small nuances where, where it does make a difference. So here's what happens if you just took this formula and applied to say, for example, integral of square root of x dx. Now you can use this formula as x to the 1 half power dx, and you add 1 to the exponent. Uh, 
one, so you do one, one half plus one, and you put one over one half plus one plus c, and this will be just using this formula to do the integral. Okay? And as soon as you did, do this, you see that you get this ugly fraction inside the fraction, which is called complex fractions, right? And that requires a few more steps to solve. And you don't want that because I mean, it, it's annoying, right? Trying to, to simplify this. However, try to do the same thing, but this time following what I said. Okay? Rather than using this formula, do what I said. Okay? So what I'm doing is you take 1 half and you add 1. What is that? What's 1 half plus 1? 3 over 2, right? And what did I say? What did I put here? The reciprocal. The reciprocal. So what should be placed here? 2 thirds. And that allows you to skip this, this notation and go from here to there directly. Okay? And, uh, you know, in fact, if you can skip some steps, that reduces the chance of making mistakes because the shorter it is, there's less of a place to make any mistake. Okay? So this is, this is what I'm trying to say when I said there's a subtle difference. I'm, I'm really calling this as the reciprocal because that's what you should be placing. Not this. I'm not asking you to calculate this. I want you to actually calculate this first and put the reciprocal of this number in front. That's my remark on the power.